No, but I want one. Welcome back to the glass eye. So I had the red Komodo for 24 hours. So I made a Porsche 911 film, a little short piece with my friend Peter in his shop. Here, I'm gonna share my thoughts about the camera, using it, what it was like, and who I think it's for. The red Komodo kind of occupies this kind of an interesting space in the camera world. It's way cheaper than any of the other reds, but it's a lot more expensive than what would be its natural competitor. It's like the Blackmagic Pocket 6K because the Blackmagic Pocket 6K has a lot going for it. I mean, it's similar size sensor, similar frame rate, the same resolution, uh, but it's also got internal NDs. It's got this big monitor attached or screen attached, two mini XLR inputs. It's got a way better menu system. So you gotta wonder like, why would I pay all this extra money for the Komodo? What does it have that the Blackmagic doesn't have? Well, there's a few things. Number one is the RF mount. It's super versatile. You can pretty much adapt anything to it. And even just the RF glass alone is, is amazing. For this tiny camera, you attach a 24 to 70 that's stabilized, the RF version. That would be a dream to work with. The global shutter is great too if you need it. If you're shooting a lot of action, if you're shooting a lot of movement and whip pans and whatever, that global shutter does come in handy. But again, the rolling shutter in a lot of other cameras is pretty reasonable these days. I think there's not too many cameras that have horrendous rolling shutter in that price range. So it's a bonus, but it's not like a deal breaker. I think the number one reason you would get the red Komodo and pay all this extra money is because you just simply want that marginal improvement in quality. And by marginal, I don't mean it's minimal. There's something though about the red image quality that is just unlike anything I've used before. There's something very nuanced and, and subtle to the image that I just haven't seen in any other cameras I've worked with. And I think that's what you're paying for. I don't know if it's the codec, the sensor, the color science, I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna pretend to understand those things, but I know when I look at the image, the nuance and in, in the gradation of tones and luminosity and, and just everything that you work with just feels a bit more natural. It feels a bit more like what you're actually seeing when you're filming. Even when you're, let's say something's clipped like the sun, the transition from where you have data to that clipped section is so gradual and smooth that it almost feels like it's not clipped. There's something about the roll off that is just, it's just not like other stuff. And I think if that marginal improvement is worth it to you, and if you have the money to spend, that's why you'd get the red Komodo. Otherwise, the black magic does make a lot more sense, logically, pragmatically. Like if I could, I'd get the red Komodo. It's simple as that right now, but I can't justify it. And it's interesting, before we leave, there's a couple questions about the FX3 being compared to the Komodo, and I feel like it's almost not a valid comparison. A great analogy is actually the cars that I filmed with either one of the cameras. So the Porsche Taycan being like the latest and greatest electric offering from Porsche is super fast, has all the crazy specs, and has all the creature comforts that you could want in a modern car, which is sort of like the FX3 or the A7S3. The Komodo, on the other hand, is a very manual experience, so just like any cinema camera. And that's kind of like the classic Porsche 911, where it's about the experience of filming with it and all the little nuances of that experience and manually shifting gears, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have any of the creature comforts, but that's kind of where the charm is. And you're getting this unbelievable visceral quality from the image that you kind of don't get in the Taycan. The Taycan is a much more clinical experience. I put the two cameras on sort of either end of the spectrum, one being sort of manual cinema cameras that are the priority is quality. And on the other end, you've got sort of the convenience being the priority where autofocus, IBIS, high frame rates, all those things you're getting in a very small package that you can throw in any backpack and take with you. And that's where the mirrorless bodies are. And I feel like the FX3 is the best of that world. And in sort of a somewhat similar price range, the Komodo is the best of the other world. And as far as cons with the red, I mean, I'd say the, the menus are a little bit clunky. The startup time is like 30 seconds, I think. So if you're shooting like doc style, you gotta definitely take that into account. Like keep the camera on if something cool might happen because otherwise you're gonna miss it. And if you're digging the automotive content, I actually did a breakdown of automotive photography. So we go through the planning, the shooting and the editing of this image. It's an AMG GTR Pro. We did it with a strobe light and a Fuji GFX. So if you want to check that out, the link is wherever it is. A massive, massive thank you again to Lauren Lapham Sales and Rentals. They are my go-to place for cameras and audio and lenses and everything. And uh, they've been super helpful and supportive over the years. They were the ones who lent me the red Komodo to review. This wouldn't have been possible without them. So thank you. And thank you for subscribing thousand, over a thousand subscribers now. That's super exciting. So onward and upward. Let's make more videos. See you next time.